I had the amazing fortune when I was a freshman at Oberlin College to come into contact with Paul Dawson. He was a bit of a legend in the government department and on the campus there. And at that point in time, I had been an extraordinarily mediocre uh, biology major and was really happy to get into the courses of things that I was interested in, which was political science, American government. And I signed up for his class. There was only one problem with his class. It was at 8.30 in the morning. And that was a little early for the undisciplined version of me as a freshman. And we, two stories really crystallize what he meant to me. Uh, the first is I had a, um, we had a paper due and it required us to have read the New York Times, be following a story and to write a paper on that story. Well, I subscribed to the New York Times. I had a stack of New York Times that were unread next to my desk. And I look up and realize that it is a Wednesday night. I'm coming back from an away game. I was a college basketball player. We played an away game in Pennsylvania that night. And I waited until we got back to start my paper. Class was 8.35 Thursday morning. It was due then. I stay up all night. I turn in a paper. And as one might imagine, it wasn't that good. Uh, he hands the paper back and he gave me a D. And I'd never gotten a D on anything I had written in my entire life. Um, I was generally up until that moment considered a very good writer. And the real problem though, was that at Oberlin, there were no grades lower than a C minus. You either got up to a C minus through an A or you got no entry, which meant that you didn't lose any credit for it. But if someone gave you a D, it meant that you actually had to go talk to the teacher and figure out what was going on. So humbly embarrassed, I go and I visit with him. And he sits there and he looks at me and he says, do you have any idea how talented you are? And, you know, which is totally not where I thought the conversation was going to start. And I was sort of, I mean, I guess he said, but do you know what your problem is? And I said, no, he said, you have so much charisma that you have never had to develop your substance. He said, your whole life, I suspect, you have charmed people into anything that you wanted. He said, and the problem with people like that is they're never forced to develop their substance. He said, so you are now going to be forced to have your substance meet your style or else you're never going to be successful here. <clears throat> and I was offended and touched, embarrassed and inspired all at the same time. He said, so I gave you a D because this is not who you should be. I'm going to give you a chance to redo the paper. I went back, redid the paper, did the paper the way I know how to do papers, wrote what I thought was a fantastic paper, turned it in and he gave me a B plus. Now I go talk to him again because I'm angry because I was like, I know this is an A paper. And he said to me, that is your tax. That's the tax. You, it was an A paper. He said, but you're going to pay a tax for not doing it the right way the first time. And I want you to forever remember that you have a gift. And whether that gift winds up being fully utilized or not, will be dependent upon your ability to put aside the BS and really work. From that moment on, he was my advisor in college. I took every course that he had. Um, to this day, if you come and you attend any of my classes, you will see the influence that he made on me in the way I teach. In the, every class I have, students are required to read the New York Times. Um, it, it's just, there's so many things that you see there and it, it just goes to show you that, you know, in this era where we tend to think that the only people who can be from our tribes are people who are our race or our religion, that if you are open to the blessings of honesty, you can find people in many different walks of life who will pour into you. 
I am who I am today in large part because Paul Dawson called me on my BS and made me uncomfortable. He troubled my water and I am forever grateful for that. Uh, the second person that I would like to talk about is Ron Kirk, who I met when I was a baby lawyer in Dallas, Texas, and he was running for mayor. And I actually had an offer from the law firm he worked at, but I took an offer from a rival law firm and met him, though, because one of the partners at my firm happened to be good friends with him. I volunteered for the kickoff of his mayoral campaign, and he was running to be the first black mayor in Dallas, Texas. And I volunteer, I go to the event, and my job is to follow the photographer and write down the names of all the people in every picture. Here's the thing. At those campaign announcements, every picture has three or four people in them. They're people from all walks of life, different nationalities. The photographer took over 200 to 300 pictures. I can vouch for the first 70 pictures being the names, being accurate. After that, I went numb. I call him the next day and I say to him, I said, sir, I'm not a prima donna and I am not high maintenance but I have a master's in public policy from Duke. I have a law degree from Duke. I've volunteered campaigns. I grew up with parents that were active in the community in Chicago. If all I do for your campaign is follow the photographer, I will do it gladly, but that's not gonna be the highest and best use of my ability to serve you and your campaign. So I can write position papers. I can do, you know, I go off and he kind of, he sits there and says, you know what, I'll tell you what, the campaign steering committee meets every Friday morning at 8 a.m. Why don't you start coming this Friday? And I show up and everyone who wound up running Dallas or being influential in Dallas for the next 15 or so years was in that room. And I was the interloper. I was the person who had no ties other than I picked up the phone and advocated for myself and I took all the jobs no one else wanted to take I did anything because I knew it wasn't about the the title it wasn't about the 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 fanciness of it it was about showing that I was willing to outwork anyone else and it was also demonstrating that I understood what an opportunity looked like. From that moment, my life in Dallas and my life overall has been radically different to the point where his wife introduced me to my wife. We have Thanksgiving dinners there some years. We have Easter dinners there some years. Uh, he has been a mentor to me in every iteration of my career. And it all goes back to the fact that I showed up and advocated for myself and he gave me a chance. And I try to remember that moving forward, that when people have the ability to speak up for themselves, offer them a seat at the table and see what they make of it.